with Aviatrix. And today is a special one because we only have our ACE certified engineers with us. If you're not an ACE certified engineer, you need to get out right now. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> but you can get ACE certified if you haven't heard about, heard about it, but you should be ACE certified. This is extended to only ACE certified individuals. Now, if you haven't seen a demo day before, that's great because you're in for a treat and we're going to deploy a comprehensive multi-cloud network based off of Aviatrix cloud networking platform. And we're going to do this with the UI as well as with Terraform, okay? Now, to make this go more seamlessly, I've actually recorded uh, the uh, components of the deployment so that I can speed it up and add commentary and pause and go back if I need to talk about more things or answer a question. So it'll make it easier for me to demonstrate things. And, you know, honestly, I talk a lot. And so I think it would take more than, uh, you know, if we did this live, it would take a long time for me to do it live. So I'm really excited to get started. Give me a second to stop sharing this and share my entire screen. And uh, for questions, if you have any questions, please throw them in the Q&A box. Don't use the chat. Uh, I, I, we like to record the Q&As and, and see what's going on there. And it's easier to answer and dismiss and whatnot. Uh, and then there's also going to be a poll that will pop up on your screen later at the end that Katie will get going for us, okay? So again, thank you very much for joining us. Now, I want to just mention a couple things. If you want to see more about Aviatrix, and stay up to date with what we're doing in, in the industry and we're doing new things every single week, then I want you to check out the aviatrix.com slash events page. Everything you can imagine around tech talks and demos and, and new features are going to be posted here and you can go in, and subscribe and, and uh, register for all of those and be up to date and be the best ace out there. Okay, and then also, our YouTube channel, the Aviatrix corporate YouTube channel is being updated every week as well. And we have new things. If you miss something, you can go in here and review and watch it and uh, stay up to date. Also, I have my own YouTube channel where I have a multi-cloud network architecture series. Please go subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can be famous one day. I want to have more subscribers than the corporate channel eventually. I have 374 and they got 1.28. It's a little competition I have inside. So yeah, go subscribe there and I, I wanna see more people there, okay? So let's get started. What I'm gonna do first is share the topology. So we're going to end up with this design at the end of the actual uh, demonstration, okay? So it's pretty straightforward. We have a multi-cloud network, we have uh, a region in AWS US West, or EU West 1, and then a region in EU West 2, and then an Azure region uh, in West US 2. And they're all going to be talking to each other via a full mesh, high throughput encrypted backbone that Aviatrix built between the transit networks that we're going to be uh, inserting into these cloud networks. Okay. Now, every one of these clouds are going to have their own set of workloads connected to them. So EUS1 will have its own workload up here. The EUS2 will have its own workload. And then e and West US2 and Azure will have its own workload. And then we'll also be connecting just one of the transits for today to on-prem. Now on-prem could mean anything. It could mean your data center, it could mean a co-location facility, it could be a, a partner, it could be your computer, it doesn't matter. It's really in the end, it's a standard, standards-based IPsec tunnel that we orchestrate downstream. It can also be done on top of a direct connect or express route is another option. Uh, and we can encrypt at super high throughput, uh, you know, line rate actually, uh, over top of private peerings as well. So that's what we're going to build out. And then the last piece of this is for building is going to be segmentation. So Aviatrix is the first to bring multi-cloud segmentation mechanism to the cloud. And what it is, is basically we're going to have two different segments, one called sec domain one, one another one called sec domain two, and then we'll place the appropriate workloads into those segments. And you'll see that when we do that, they can't talk to each other unless we allow a, a security connection policy. And it's very easy, very seamless. And we're going to demonstrate that too. And then finally, we're going to go through our visibility platform. You can build all day long. You can build a really brilliant and beautiful automated orchestrated an intelligent network with Aviatrix controller, but operating is really where the magic happens because that's where you're gonna spend most of your day, day in, day out, is operating. 
that network, making sure it's running at its peak, everything is going as designed. Okay, so that's a component of our platform co called Copilot. And you're in luck today because we're going to demonstrate some of the newest features of Copilot, stuff that was just released that hasn't been recorded yet and or shared uh, publicly. So you're going to get a preview of that. Okay, so we're going to get started. Here's what we're going to build out first. We're going to build out this transit and then we're going to connect an existing workload. This is an Azure uh, to the Aviatrix Transit we build up. Okay, so give me one second to bring up this video. I'm gonna make it full screen. Hopefully you can all see it. If not, I'll have one of my um, colleagues scream at me to fix it, but let's see, let's do the uh, enter full screen. You should be able to see this. Okay, so let's get started. So we're gonna build Azure West Transit and spoke via the UI. So what we do first is under the multi-cloud transit section, we click the setup button, all right? Pretty straightforward. What we're gonna do is we're going to put two Aviatrix Transit gateways in an existing Azure VNet that we pre-created. You could have pre-created that however you wanted to via your own automation scripts or you can even use Aviatrix to do it for you, okay? So it's as simple as selecting the cloud name, and in this case it's Azure, and then the gateway, give it a name, give the gateway a name, I call it Azure West Transit Gateway. And then this is a multi-account, multi-lingual platform. So you can manage many subscriptions, many accounts, many clouds via the same controller. So in this case, I'm selecting the one that I have set up, which is called Aviatrix Azure Ops. So that's my subscription. And then I'm going to pick a region, West US too, right? So I'm going to pick that guy. And then we're also going to pick the subnets that were built out, right? So the subnets that are connected to the resource group. So I'm going to pick that one called the West Transit. Okay. Here's a subnet component of it. And any public subnet is sufficient. And then you can select the gateway size. Now you would select the gateway size based on the uh, throughput that you're expecting to have in and out of that transit. Now everything else you can leave default. Uh, we can go through that, explain what those are another time. But really, just hit create. And then behind the scenes, it's going to push... Uh, you know, 20, 30, 40 different API calls, configure IPsec, configure BGP, configure routing, configure security, configure the instances and public IPs and everything. They're out routing all, all, everything you can imagine is being done. Now that doesn't, that was sped up, of course, right? That would take more like two minutes versus 15 seconds. Uh, but imagine doing that manually or via your, autom or your own automation. It can take quite a bit of time and it's not very intelligent. It's more of a static architecture. So the next step is to make it HA, right? We want everything to be resilient to be active active. And so all you have to do is select that gateway we just created, select an alternate subnet, which is part of a different zone, availability zone, and then hit go. So it's going to do the exact same thing a second time, connect the two together, make them active active so they can forward traffic at high throughput actively. And we're done, okay? So that's all good. Successfully created that, that, that guy there. So the next step is we need to, can, oh, actually first before we do that, I'm just gonna show you exactly what we've done. So you can see under the list section, this is validating what we deployed. So you can look at the transit. You can see, okay, if I search for Azure, what did we deploy? Well, we deployed this West Transit Gateway. And then of course the HA Gateway, all it did was append HAGW. So you know that that's the HA Gateway that was built up, right? Now uh, you can see from this view, you can see the subnets and the, Ciders that were selected as a part of the, uh, the uh, VNet that I selected to, to, to throw this into. Okay, so let's go back to the setup. What's next? Well, we need to connect that uh, existing workload in Azure to this transit, right? So we have hub and spoke topology. So I scroll down past the transit stuff, go into the spoke section, and I will do some spoke functions. And so really it's the exact same thing. You just saw this, you've done it once before, you can do it again. You select the cloud type, give the spoke gateway a name, select the account name. Now what's cool here is you can do cross accounts, cross subscription connectivity, right? So it's a really nice way to do that, but we're gonna do all within the same account and subscription. So same thing, I'm just gonna fast fly through it because it's the exact same process as before. Now we're just doing a spoke gateway, okay? Same thing, hit create, give it a couple minutes. In this case, it'll be seconds because I fast forwarded it and that spoke will be ready with the gateway in it. Now we're also gonna make that HA because we wanna have the highest throughput, the lowest latency, and the most resilient connectivity 
in this overlay connection. And so we're going to do the same thing. It says optional up here, but you know what? Everybody makes it HA because nobody wants a non-HA environment unless it was a lab environment. Okay, so we're going to enable it on an alternate subnet and availability zone, and it's going to push that out. Almost done. Done, okay. What do you guys think is next? Well, we need to connect that spoke that we just built out after we validate that we built up the spoke. I keep forgetting that. I forget that only the things I do myself these days. So you can see I'm just validating that those spokes are deployed and they're up and ready to go. There they are. You can see what subnets they're a part of. All right, let's go back to the setup and we're going to deploy or connect that spoke to the transit that we created. So really it's as simple as selecting the spoke gateway and source gateway, the one we just created, and telling it what transit you're supposed to connect to. Because we can have a bunch of transits. You could even connect uh, an Azure workload to a AWS transit if you wanted to do that. And you know, it's possible, I don't see a lot of people doing that, but it's, uh, we're giving you that flexibility to build whatever topology you wish, whatever your heart desires, you can build it out here because you own the network at this point. You're not stuck as to what can be offered by your cloud source provider. You can build any topology under the sun, okay? So there it is. Now what we're showing is that, hey, those spokes are now connected to that transit gateway. Very easy, right? So now you have end-to-end -end connectivity. Really behind the scenes, we've done so many things, right? We've configured security groups, we did all the routing. You could ping back and forth, you could go in and out of that, those spoke uh, and transit networks. Within you know, minutes, you're, you're ready to go, okay? So next step here, Let's go back to my diagram. So we do it, we built this out. Next thing we're gonna do is build out EU West 1 and EU West 2 in AWS. And within those transit networks, we're going to throw some firewalls. We have something called FireNet. Aviatrix FireNet is an incredibly sim simple and powerful way to insert next generation firewalls or really any layer three service you want into the path of traffic, right? So we'll handle the life cycle of these firewalls, Fortinet, Checkpoint, Palo Alto, whatever you like, whatever is your favorite guy there, and then put them into the path of traffic based off a of policy, and then keep things symmetric, scale them out to super high throughput, 20 firewalls per security domain, or sorry, per transit. You can have many transits. It's pretty incredible. You can even have one transit set up for internet egress only, and another transit for east, west, and north, south. It's very, very flexible and it makes it very easy to Im Im implement firewalls in the cloud. If you ever try to implement a firewall in the cloud, it's a nightmare. It's, it's quite difficult and hard to follow. And all these interfaces and all these subnets and all these different environments, it's just not, a, it's, it's just a pain, right? So let Aviatrix's intelligent controller, which has a validated architecture for insertion of firewalls, do it for you in minutes, all right? And also handle everything and give you the visibility after the fact. So let's go back to my... Uh, video. Now, instead of doing this via the UI, we're going to do it via Terraform. And so what I've shown you here, I have Terraform modules. A buddy of mine built these modules. And what a module is, is kind of an abstraction of the Terraform complexity. Now, Terraform isn't horribly complex uh, anyways, especially, I mean, I, I don't come from a coding background and uh, it took me a little bit of time to pick this up, maybe a couple hours, but now I can deploy things via Terraform just by copying and pasting other people's code or anything, any code that we've uh, provided you in our website. So it's very straightforward. Anybody can pick up this stuff and start deploying. Terraform is, is a de facto multi-cloud uh, programmability language. It's, it's a declarative state, statement solution. And so you can see here, I have modules. In this module, it's saying, you know what? Call the source, the Aviatrix source of this Terraform code, and behind, I'll show you the actual code behind it, and just give it some, some, some uh, variables here. What's the CIDR you wanna use? What's the region you wanna deploy it in? What account, and the count is a variable. And then what firewall image? In this case, I'm using Fortinet. I really like Fortinet. It's one of my favorite firewall vendors out there. So that's why I'm using Fortinet. Also, we got a guy that came from Fortinet who works for Aviatrix and he's so brilliant. He helps me with a lot of things. So I'm paying him homage here. So and on top of that, we're going to connect, after we build those transit, we're gonna connect the two transits together, right? I remember I told you I have to have a full mesh transit architecture. And so you can see here down on stream of saying, connect transit one to transit two. So here are the variables that I'm calling. And then 
the next step is I'm going to show you behind the scenes of what are those modules? Like what's the actual code behind a module here? Here's the code behind the modules. Now, I didn't have to specify much of the variables here because I, there's a bunch of defaults set in the module. I don't have to worry about that. If you wanted to manipulate that, you can go in here, edit the modules and you can change your uh, defaults to whatever you wish. Okay. Now, if you want more details on Aviatrix and Terraform, us being an official Terraform provider, we have very amazing documentation on terraform.io on their website. You can go through and read all about what every module, what every resource call does and what each variable means and what they're looking for, right? Pretty straightforward. Now to deploy Terraform, you can deploy it locally on your computer, but what I like better is to deploy it on Terraform Cloud. It's a free solution. Go sign up for Terraform Cloud. It's just running the scripts from the cloud. So you have it, you can deploy it anywhere, right? You don't have to have it on your computer and worry about your computer losing connectivity or whatnot. It's a nice way to queue your plans and, and uh, validate your history of what you deployed. I really like it. So what I've done just right now is I've just queued the plan. It's gonna make sure that my code is correct. It's gonna run it through. It's gonna check that since plan is running. Yep, it looks like everything is good. It plans to add 11 new components to my Aviatrix infrastructure, okay? You can go through and review really exactly what it's gonna deploy if you want. Okay, now to deploy it, I'm just gonna say, let's do this and then com confirm the plan. And so AV or, uh, the uh, Terraform cloud is pushing out the code now. And now this would take about 10 minutes in real world, but it's some fast forwarding it. You can see uh, it's going through and deploying everything for us. It's also keeping state. So if you wanted to destruct this after, it would be one command to destruct everything, right? Instead of having to manually do that. All right, all done. 11 resources added. And I'm gonna show you now what it deployed. Now keep in mind, we deployed two transits in two different regions, firewalls, uh, connectivity between the two transits, all the routing, all the security, everything. That would take, you know, if you did that manually, it would take hours and hours and hours, if not days. If you did it via the UI, it would take about an hour, maybe. If you do it via Terraform, 10 minutes. See how valuable it is to automate your infrastructure. It's just a ridiculous amount of time saved. Okay, so you can see here under the list section where we validate what's been deployed, you can see the new European gateways, the two in each region, and what ciders were picked as a part of my variable file. And then you can see that they're connected to each other. I didn't do that manually. I did it all via Terraform. TGEU West 1 and EU West 2 are connected to each other. All the peerings are up. And then under the firewall section, we can see what firewalls were deployed. Scroll down to the bottom. You can see we've deployed four firewalls, two per transit, four Florida gates. We handled the, inst the, the uh, uh, bring up of them, the life cycle of them. We configured the interfaces. You can even download the PEM files directly from here. And you can click the button there will take you directly to the Fortinet UI and you can log in and start configuring the Fortinets. Now, you could configure these Fortinets manually, but actually what's a nicer thing to do is push a bootstrap file from Aviatrix. So Aviatrix allows you, I didn't do it in this demo because it would take too much time, but you could pre-configure bootstrap files and, and baseline configurations and Aviatrix can push it as a part of your Terraform or as a part of the scripting mechanism. And that, ter that firewall could come up and start routing immediately. Okay, pretty incredible. Now, under the advanced section, you can see what we've deployed and what B VPCs we've deployed the, them in and what, uh, what transit routers or um, Aviatrix transit routers are connected to. And you can also see what features we've enabled, right? So we've enabled inspection. Of course, we want to enable inspection so that the traffic is being inspected by the firewall immediately. But we have also enabled egress. And that, what that means is we're propagating a default route from that firewall to all the VPCs that, are, that need it for internet access end to end. You no longer have to go and manually configure default routes or propagate anything manually by hand because everything in the cloud is static unless you have Aviatrix intelligent controller infrastructure. And in this case, we're propagating it all for you. So again, tons of time saved. All right, good. That's done. So let's go back to our diagram. Next up, I'm going to configure this peering between the Azure environment that we built out via the UI and these other dudes here, the uh, EUS one and EUS two, I'm gonna to connect to those. So you can see here, it looks like two direct lines. 
like a parallel or I'm sorry, was it in series? I can't remember what they call it, but basically it looks like it's in series, but it's really not. It's actually a full mesh. I just couldn't nicely show that on the diagram without making it look ugly. So really there's a full mesh going on. And we already connected these guys to each other. We had the Terraform. Now I'm going to connect this Azure environment to both EUS1 and EUS2 via the UI. Very easy to do that. I just want to show you how it's done via the UI as well. So you understand that, you know, multi-cloud transit peering, it's not easily possible without Aviatrix. It's a pain to do this and a pain to manage. In Aviatrix, all you gotta do is select your source transit in one region and in one cloud and your destination, hit okay. And then all the tunnels and all the routing are built for you end to end. Okay, so you can see it's doing a full mesh there. I'm gonna do it again to the other guy. So Azure needs to connect to both AWS regions, right? So we're gonna connect it to the second AWS region. Hit okay, bam, done. Literally in seconds, we've built multi-cloud connectivity. Try doing that by hand, good luck. Your life is gonna be a pain. Stop wasting time trying to do things by hand, DIY. No, let an intelligence, intelligent platform with years and years of experience built into it, do it for you. Now what I'm showing you here is that, let me pause this before I go too quick, uh, is that after we built out that transit, Aviatrix is collecting the latency in real time between your multi-cloud network. And so we can co quickly come in here and verify, well, what's the latency look like across region and across the world or across transits in, and validate that. that. That looks good. Yeah, that's pretty, that's actually pretty good. Okay. Now a network individuals, this is really good for network individuals, right? Because if you have an app owner complaining that their app is going slow and you know that that app is going across that region or going across the transit environment, you can quickly validate that it's not a latency issue. And you know, it can definitely be a latency issue because it's, there's definitely latency in cloud service provider networks that can pop up from time to time. It's just another data center. Like it's an abstracted data center is all it is to you guys. Okay. All right. It's great. What's next? Let's connect, connect it. Oh, we got to connect the eight of his spokes. So if you look over here, remember these spokes, these are already there. We haven't connected them to their transits yet. So let's go do that right now in the UI. It's the exact same process I showed you before. So we go to, you actually know at this point how to do it, right? So under the setup section, you go to the spoke uh, section of the uh, controller UI, and then you select your cloud type. This time it's AWS, not Azure, and the gateway name. Okay, the region. And then the VPC ID, and then the subnet, the gateway size. Remember the size is going to be based off of the throughput you expect to have and you deploy it. And we'll do the exact same thing for, I like how they add congratulations to this little notification there, the, the dev guys. I thought that's so funny. They're, they think they're cute. Anyway, so AWS, AWS uh, US2, you can same thing. So the other environment now, uh, this one over here, US1 or US2. So it's being deployed. Great. Go connect that to, oh, we gotta make them HA. You, know, you can't forget to make things HA. It only takes an extra step here. You don't wanna miss that if it only takes a second to make things more resilient. So we're almost done building out this guy and this guy, and then next we're gonna connect them to their appropriate local transits. Are we getting any good Q&A up here? I'm gonna check while, let's see, get some good Q&A. Don't forget, there's a Q&A box. I'm looking at, there's no Q&A coming in. If you have any questions, let's go for you to ask them. Keep them specific to Aviatrix, no Q&A about my life. I might answer them though. All right, so that's good, that's done. So we're connecting to the, tr the appropriate transit in the appropriate region. All done. Okay. So what's next is we need to connect to on-prem data center in this case, and you can do that via VPN. You can do that via direct connect. In this case, we're going to build a VPN from the transit in the EU West, uh, EU West one to an on-prem router downstream. And in this case, I just click external device because I'm using a CSR to, to um, simulate that. 
And then we're going to run BGP because BGP is fantastic. Best running protocol out there. So you can see here, we select the transit we're going to connect that to. And it's going to be that West one, the FireNet transit we created. Give it the connection a name. Select your local AS. In this point, I just picked a random AS number. This probably belongs to somebody. It shouldn't have used the public AS, but <laughs> it doesn't matter because it's all it is in my little lab. And then I select the, the different algorithms. So I know what algorithms my CSR is configured right now to, uh, uh, to um, approve or to support. And so we have all sorts of algorithms you can select. We're going to select these ones here. Now, if you had multiple gateways downstream, multiple CSRs, you could just click that button. It'll duplicate your, your VPNs. If you want to do it over a private connection, you could do it click that little over direct connect. And that could be not just over any uh, over direct connect, it could be over any private connection that you have set up. Select the AS, the remote AS, the remote IP I'm connecting to, the pre-shared key. And I use something really simple, demo day, one, two, three. And then you don't have to select the local tunnel and remote tunnel IP. You can if you want to specify them, but we'll build them out of, out of a default pool, the 169 address space for you. Okay, hit go and it's done. It's really quick action to build VPNs in the solution. It's pretty amazing. So let's go down to the site to cloud connection to validate what we built out. You can see here it's down right now because I haven't configured the CSR side, but it gives you information about it. Now the cool thing is I can go and edit that and download the config that I need to throw on the CSR, right? So I can go here, pick whatever you want, either Cisco. In this case, I'm just gonna pick a generic because it could be anything on the other side. It could be a Fortinet, a Palo Alto, Juniper. And really what it does is it gives you all the config you need for the other side. So you can generate these for your customers, for your on-prem network engineers and send it to them and say, hey, this is what I need you to configure towards me. Okay, so I did that and you can see now the uh, connection is up. If you go back and edit it, you can see I have an active, active, equal cost, multi-path uh, uh, connection so I can get higher throughput. And you can make that non-equal cost multi-path if you wanted to, it's up to you. All right, so we're gonna go back to this uh, advanced config section and what we're gonna do is check the BGP diagnostics. I want to know, make sure my BGP is up. So remember, this is this platform you runs full BGP. So we can check show IP BGP, for example, and you can see, yep, there we go. I have routes being learned. There's the best route. You can see it's over that 169 address space, which is the tunnel. And the 65010 is uh, the, the path there, the AS path. And this is my on-prem router. Now I'm just gonna do a show IP BGP from the on-prem side and make sure I'm limiting the cloud routes. You can see, yes, I am. And M is there because multipathing is, is enabled. That little M uh, icon over here, if you don't know much about BGP, that little M means multipath. Okay, all done. So we're gonna check the connectivity, make sure that actually I can go between my on-prem and my, my uh, uh, cloud environment. So you can see I'm going to be, I have a little workload or a little host living in here and it's going to be pinging into these environments. So I think first I'm pinging 194.194 and that's over here. That's EU West one. So I'm going to go all the way up here, cross the transit up into EU West uh, two, I should say, not ES one, EU West two. And I have a workload up there. So I'm pinging across the transit infrastructure. So let's make sure that works. There you go. Yep. All good. And what's interesting is you can see my latency is 13.3 milliseconds, right? So that's up from here, across here, and up there. It's all within the same region, really. It's not, it's not a going across, um, I would say, across country, right? So you'll see here when I go across to Azure, which is in a different country, which is uh, there, you can see how, how much higher it is, 132 milliseconds. So it's definitely going across the Aviatrix multi-cloud network backbone. Good. All right, next up. Segmentation, probably one of my favorite and coolest features that uh, I love to play with here. So you remember I talked about these segmentation domains. We're going to throw EUS1 workload into segment, segment one, EUS2 into segment two, and, and then the uh, West US2 and Azure into segment one. So, so you, you can imagine that the segment ones are gonna be able to talk to each other by default because they're part of the same segmentation domain. But segment two is not gonna be able to talk to anybody because he's got no other buddy in the same segment. But then we're gonna create a policy that allows them to talk to each other. So a shared services segment, or just a kind of like a leaking between segments. Now, I want you to keep in mind, this is a multi-cloud segmentation model. It doesn't exist today, right? This is, you can't do that unless you have a unified data plane, normalized data plane across all your clouds 
and having AVH just handle the segmentation mechanism. You know, if you try to do this manually, it's not possible. If you try to do it within the same cloud, you have all sorts of crazy rules you got to implement and manage. It's just not easy. This is like a VRF that we're managing via an orchestration solution and providing all the leaking and the routing and the security for you. All right, so let's do that. How do we do it? Literally, it's like three clicks. It's super straightforward. You go under the segmentation section of the multi-cloud transit. We enable segmentation on three transit environments that we built. So we're gonna enable segmentation because it's not enabled by default. Really behind the scenes, we're adding additional policies and interfaces and stuff like that. And so um, we don't have, uh, you, don't, you don't have to do anything by, you know, by hand. So we're creating and enabling that so they can, they can support the segmentation model. We're gonna do it on all three transits that we created. All right, all done. And then we have to actually create those segmentation domains, right? We have to name them. You haven't created them yet. So let's create those sec domain one and sec domain two. All done. And this is not sped up actually. That was, that's really how fast it is. That part of it, it's pretty cool. Okay, so now you can see here, if I click sec domain one, he's currently not connected to sec domain two. And that means reverse is also true. Sec domain two is not connected to sec domain one. So we gotta go to the build section here. We gotta tell the infrastructure, we gotta tell the controller, well, who's connected to sec domain one? Which VPCs are connected to sec domain one? So I'm going to connect TGEUS1 to sec domain one. So all you gotta do is select the uh, secure domain and the attachment name. There we go, associate it. So now it associated that VPC to sec domain one. And we're gonna do the same thing for the Azure environment. Remember Azure and, and EUS1 talk to each other in the same sec domain. And then the uh, AWS EUS2 can, it goes into its own sec domain called sec domain two. Done. So back under plan, remember, they're not connected to each other. So the connectivity should be broken now. Before I showed you the connectivity was working, right? Well, now it's gonna be broken. Can I ping? First of all, I'm gonna make sure I can ping um, within the same sec domain. Remember that's going, let me go back to my diagram so you know, guys, you know, you know what I'm doing here. I'm pinging from here. I'm oh, sorry, from here, sec domain one, all the way over to sec domain two. I'm sorry, sec domain one, in the same, uh, in, in the same sec domain, but it's in a different cloud, right? So EU West one and AWS is, connect, is connecting across the transits to West US two and Azure in the same sec domain, they can talk to each other. That's why you see that high latency here. But remember earlier, I also showed that these guys can talk to each other, but now they're not gonna be able to talk to each other because they're in different sec domains. So let's test that out. Yep, it's broken, right? That's how it's supposed to be. I don't want those sec domains to talk to each other. They're in two different, completely different sec domains. But now, you know, I got a, I got a call and said, you know, I need to actually create a shared services environment and have them talk to each other. Okay, no big deal. Just move that over to connect it. And all the policies, all the routing, everything's done for you. Look at that. This is in real time. I didn't fast forward that at all. Immediately, everything's reprogrammed to allow that connectivity to occur. Okay. Again, imagine doing that by hand. It's not even possible. It's just, or trying to do it via some sort of manual scripting mechanism. It's not possible. Okay. All right. So now we're going to move to visibility. Now, the cool thing is that I'm going to do this live because this visibility, the demo didn't show the new feature. So I'm going to show you this live. So I can actually close out my video. So we built all this stuff out. Fantastic. This is the end result. We're going to jump into Copilot right here. I got a lot of time to show Copilot. And that's when I, I needed a lot of time because we have so much added into this, into Copilot nowadays that sometimes it takes a full hour to demonstrate this to customers if you want to go super deep. So here's my Copilot. So you get a dashboard, you know, and the first thing you log into and you see is a dashboard. This is kind of like your morning coffee view of the network, right? You have this beautiful <coughs> Aviatrix overlay built out, excuse me, and <coughs> Take a glass of water before I die. All right, so you have this beautiful Aviatrix network built out, multi-cloud, all the features, all the bells and whistles, everything enterprise class. We need to monitor this, right? To make sure it's up and running and everything is clean and, and performing correctly. And so we give you this nice dashboard. You can go in and see quickly what's up, what's down. You can see over here, I have some site to cloud connections, some BGP connections that are down um, because I don't have them turned on but I do have some that are up uh, and anything that's down will trickle to the top and alert you. 
And you can also see, let me zoom in a little bit. This is a little bit small. So hopefully you guys can zoom in. Uh, how do I zoom in on a Mac? There we go. All right, so you can see my virtual data centers and how they're distributed and deployed across the world. You can see that from a list perspective or you can see it from a geographic mapping perspective. You can see how all your clouds are deployed, your cloud gateways are deployed, the distribution of them. So you can see, well, what we have AVHX transit gateways, we have spoke gateways, you have all sorts of gateways, right? A gateway is just a piece of software that can be used in all sorts of ways, right? And so it gets a little determination here as to what it is. In this case, we have just spokes and transits. You might have a VPN concentration gateway is another example. Uh, you can see how they're deployed and cross which region and which sizes you've deployed. This is good for capacity planning. Let's figure out what's the size of your gateways based on throughput you've deployed. And then we have a multi-cloud network traffic aggregation section. So you can see across your entire cloud, what's the traffic look like? It's a nice way to aggregate and see peaks and valleys of, uh, of uh, throughput occurring across your entire cloud. Right, but a dashboard is a dashboard. I'm not gonna spend too much time there. I actually like this stuff better. So topology. If you've ever done networking on-prem before, how did you look at the real state of the network? You know, back then you had like a, a Visio diagram or something, right? Something that you would update, lucid charts, something you would keep up to date based on what you're deploying on-prem. But in the cloud, things are so easily consumable, up and down, destroyed, built, new peering connections, new subnets. Right, so it's so dynamic and everybody's working on it at the same time, right? You have DevOps guys, you have network engineers, you have whoever can log in and build their own environment. And so you need one active environment. You need some way to actively collect what's the current uh, view of the network uh, as, it, as, as it sits. And so this is providing you a visual troubleshooting functionality for your cloud. We've dynamically mapped out what we've built. Now I have a pretty messy network because I have all sorts of customer environments being built up here. But you can see here what we've done is we, we clustered together components of different VPCs and environments. So these little blue things, these are clusters of environments. So if I double check that or double click it, you can see here, okay, that's a VPC or a VNet in Azure. And I have two gateways in there and I have two subnets and I, that's the, the Azure information there. Now, if I click the show instances, I can actually see what's inside that VNet. Same thing for the, uh, the West in the US or in GCP or in the East in, 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 uh, in AWS. So pretty cool, right? You can see all that. Now you can mess with the physics and I can, for example, smooth out the edges and make it a little bit nicer and you can play around. You can move things around and build your own topology. And then you can save that topology and load it exactly how you want. So when you log in, you can, you can have your own custom topology for what you want to work on that day or what you're usually working on in the cloud. So you can really filter out whatever you wish, uh, but I'm showing you everything here. So everything is interactive. I can click it and get information from it. So I'm pulling the metadata directly from the cloud or cloud environment. You can see on the right side pane here, all the information about that instance is going to show up here. It's IP address, it's DNS information, right? Anything I click is going to gather the construct information from the cloud. Except for that, that's just a, that's an, a, that's nothing really. You have to click something real. So here's an, here's an actual, VPC and the information about the VPC, you can see the cider of that VPC, what region it's in, the VPC ID. So you no longer have to go to a bunch of different consoles and gather information. You just go here and search to it. And actually that's the key here. We have a global search functionality for everything we're indexing and databasing here, right? So I can search anything I want here. I can search IPs, I can search ciders. Like let's see if I search 10.1.0.0 slash 16. You can see anything with 10.1.0.0 slash 16 as a part of it is going to be highlighted here. So those gateways, this VPC owns that subnet. And of course it's being routed across this transit infrastructure. So it's giving you information there and you can search anything you want, not just IPs. You can search names, um, values, coordinates, anything you want that we've databased will show up here. So a nice way to quickly determine the, the environment. Now check this out. We have come up with a multi-cloud tagging mechanism. So you know how you have tags in, Azure and GCP and, and AWS. Well, that's not multi-cloud. You need something multi-cloud that you can call upon and use for visualization purposes. So we can select any construct in here, anything that shows up in this topology and give it a custom tag. So for example, this Azure workload over here, I can give it a custom tag and click add tag and call it Dana Azure dude, right? So I'm gonna click add, hit add. Now I can search for that when I come in another day or you know, actually I can select multiple things. Let's highlight and click all these things and give it that, that, um, that Azure, the same one right here. Okay. 
So I can come in another day and I can search that. Just let me search dude. Because there, there we go. Because I know, I know exactly what I call it. But because that's going to use regular expression. So I see all the stuff I highlighted initially is going to show up here. So you know what you're working with. So if you're just curious about a certain app, give your workloads and your environments the app name and just search the app and that'll pop up. And then you can filter out based off that. You can click the little filter button and it'll only show that environment, right? Let me try that again. Search dude and click filter. You can see now anything I selected and how it's connected to each other is going to show up there. All right, pretty brilliant. Now we also have visual troubleshooting built in here. We're adding more and more troubleshooting tools from the controller, but you can select a gateway, for example, an AVHX gateway, and we can run ping and trace route from there. So under diagnostics, you have destination, select the destination, let's say it's the internet. Let's see if I can ping the internet from here. Let's pick a route table. Let's just ping the internet. Should be able to ping the internet from here. I think all my gateways have access to the internet. But what's cool about this is you could ping from workload to workload, region to region. Oh, I clicked away and then it went away. Uh, basically, yeah, so I'm not gonna sit here and let that run, but you can run a ping. And the power of that is you no longer have to jump into a workload in your environment. You, have, you already have a gateway sitting next to your workloads. Just do your ping and trace and troubleshooting from there. We're gonna add additional features like iperf and packet cap directly from the Copilot UI. Okay. Now we've added some new stuff as well. Look here, all these green links are AVATRIX overlay transit connections or spokes, spoke to transits, spoke to spoke connections. Uh, these are our overlay uh, tunnels. Now, because it's our overlay, we can now discover the real time latency end to end. So you can see here across every transit link, every spoke to spoke, spoke to connection, spoke to transit link, transit to transit, we're collecting that traffic, uh, that telemetry from a uh, latency perspective in real time. So you can see here, that's the latency happening in real time. I can click any, any one of these. Before this was on demand and now it's, it's real time. It's constantly happening. We're collecting this and we'll build a select in the future very soon, a custom threshold that you can alert on and get an alert if you go above a certain threshold for your apps. Okay. If you want to see all that, you can go to latency monitor and see every single latency running across your entire multi-cloud network. This is brilliant. You don't have this from a CSP. They, don't, they hide this information from you, right? That's not their game. Our game is to give you a fully open solution. You need every single tool at your disposal to be effective in the cloud. No hiding, right? This is enterprise class level. We're not playing games anymore, okay? So this is, um, that's, that, that's pretty much the topology section. Uh, there's, there's a lot more, but I'm not gonna go too much in depth there. Okay, so flow. The other challenge that our customers have in the cloud is flow information. CSPs and every other solution, it's hard to gather flows if you can get any at all. Well, AV Church gateways export NetFlow B9 data to a Copilot and Copilot can do its analytics and give you easily digestible outputs in all sorts of fashions like graphs and charts and pie charts and top talker information. And everything in here is interactive, right? So I can click anything I want. I can click this guy and see what is this thing? I don't know, let's click it. And it will then create a dynamic filter. See how it created this filter right here? And it filters everything else and focuses it based on that source IP. So that source IP is talking to these destinations on these ports, okay? On the, and this is a source information, the TCP flags. So it's very easy to create filters dynamically by just clicking anything you're interested in seeing in this main dashboard. But let's take that a step further. Let's say you know what app is what. Okay, well, you create your own filter. So you can create your own custom filter like for example, destination address, you can say, well, I'm curious what's going to 10.200.0.4, right? You can enter, apply that filter and everything else downstream now is based off that filter. And you can go and save that filter, right? You can come back and save it in Dana's filter 10, save it. I can come back anytime I want and load that filter. There it is, Dana's Oops, is this one, Dana's filter. I have so many of them there. So it automatically reloads it. So you can give it a name, right? And so call it your app, corporate app, and quickly load filters. And you can add more and more arguments to your filter to make it more granular if you want. 80 different things you can pick from. Now, let's say you don't want to filter based on IP. What if we just filter based off those tags that we gave it earlier? Doesn't that make more sense? You already app named your apps. Why not just create filters based off the tags? Well, you can do that. Click the filter by tag. And then I have that Dana Azure dude tag. Apply the filter. And here's all the information based off that, those constructs I tagged earlier. Okay. You can manage all your tags in the manage tag section under the settings. If you want to see that, you know, tag manager, you can see 
everything I've, I've tagged in here based off that tagging can go and add or remove. And it's a little bit more um, easier to manage from the tag manager than it is via the flow IQ section, okay? Or the topology section. All right, let's go on through some of these. We have enough time. Trending, we've all seen this. This is trending information from a network perspective. I'm not gonna go too much depth there, but you can change the focus. You can go in and out of the peak and peaks and valleys and get more details off that. And remember every single uh, filter you create can be applied to any page in here. So you can go back in here. I can go back to my, oh, it's already being tagged. No, it's not. Let's go to this one. I have this other filter. Oh, I've no information there. Let's try this one. There we go. So now that tag I created earlier, that filter I created earlier is also relevant here. All right. So geolocation, this isn't new. We've had this for a while, but we can geolocate your application traffic. So if you have a lot of publicly accessible stuff, you can see who's trying to access your environment, what cities they're coming from, what states, what countries, and what IPs they're coming from, and what they're trying to hit in your environment. And sometimes, like, I don't know what this is. This is Japan or something? I don't know. I think this is Japan. So I have some, <laughs> I don't know my geography, but you, you can, sometimes I have stuff hitting me from China and random places, Russia, that I didn't, like, create connectivity to. And that's really, they're, they're doing uh, some port scanning on my, my lab, right? Looking for some vulnerabilities, which is kind of nice to be able to see that. So this is good for security correlation. Now, if you want to see flows, I love this thing. This is something called a Sankey chart. It's a nice way to visualize your source destination flows and the amount of traffic and the distribution of traffic across all those flows. So you can see all these different flows I have happening, source and destination. And the thicker the flow is, the more traffic is going with, within that flow. And I can click it and see the distribution across all the different source destination pairs that make up that aggregation of flows from that source to destination. All right, again, your filters will be applicable here. Now, if you wanna see records, we've added some new things to the records. The records is a, uh, the raw data, right? This is your raw flow records from NetFlow. And we've added some new things, like we can see now the direction of that flow. We can see the duration of that flow. We can see the amount of packets, but I like this. We can see the throughput now of a single flow. So if you're curious, well, is my application flow even you know, meeting the throughput requirements, expected throughput requirements? We can go pinpoint that flow via your custom filter and then look at the throughput, right? This is pretty nice. I'm gonna skip through some of this stuff because just in the sake of time, but performance is, well, again, we're another black box. We want you to see everything to do with performance in the cloud, including the, the Aviatrix data plane. We're not gonna hide that from you. So you can select all your gateways and give you the telemetry on memory, utilize CV utilization, peak rate, transfer rate, disk utilization, et cetera. And you can overlay the different gateways on top of each other to do a nice comparison. Now we can also alert on all this. So if you go to the notifications section, you can create a custom alert. Let's call it Dana's CPU alert. Okay. And I can say CPU utilization. And I want to say, well, if I, if my gateways go above 55%, I need to be alerted on it. And I'll send it to you in my email, dash.avatrix.com. You guys can email me whenever you want. Now that you know my email. Okay. Don't subscribe me to any weird, uh, anything weird. Okay. <laughs> so there's my email and you can save that. And the, uh, the, this alert is created. Now, what does alert look like when it gets notified and gets triggered? Well, it looks like this. You get this uh, alert breadcrumb trail is what I like to call it. I don't know if that's what my developers call it, but I call it that. You can see when did it get alerted, by who did it get alerted to, like who, who alerted it? In this case, it was a controller that, that created that alert, that triggered the alert. Who was it sent to? And then when was it recovered? And if something changed in between, you'd also get a little change notification saying, hey, some new gateways were added or removed from that alert. So you can go and manually clear that out if you want as well. All right, now we're gonna get to some really cool stuff. And you know, my background is routing and I love routing. So I'm gonna spend some time here. Um, cloud routes. If you've ever done any troubleshooting in the route, routing in the cloud, it's a pain. It's a total pain because you have all these different constructs to jump into and jump out of. You have different accounts and different clouds and different regions to jump in and out of. And it's horrible to figure out where are my routes existing are they configured correctly? Well, let Aviatrix gather all that routing into a centralized database and you can do all your searching via regular expressions, regular expression searching. So basically I'm showing all the routing across all the gateways, kind of like a show IP route, like on prem, if you've ever done that before, all the detailed information. So it's a nice way to quickly search for routes in your environment and find out where they live and where they're active or where they're not active. What's the next hop? What's the metric of that route? Okay. We do the same thing across the gateways as well as across all your routing tables within the native cloud, right? This is a cloud native solution. We're not going to ignore that. So let's find some routes that are active. 
there's a route that's active. Here's your routes. Some route here, 10, 100, 0 to 016. It's a local route. And then there's a default route pointing at Navy Transit. And here's the next hop. Okay. So a nice way to visualize routing. It's just the power of this being able to search through it all. Oh, one thing I missed is that you can actually see that node. If you're curious, well, that route, where does that route live on the topology? Well, I can click this guy and it will tell me, it'll highlight in the environment what is a part of that route. All right, so that was a, I clicked a, I clicked a uh, gateway and it's part of this environment. So it highlights from a visual perspective what it looks like on a topology. Okay, let's go back to my cloud routes. And you can do the same thing for uh, Flow IQ. You can create a dynamic filter and then it'll filter everything based off that gateway and tell you what's going across that route or that filter. Okay, let's go back over here. I want to quickly get to some other cool things. So site to cloud and BGP info. Two really important features we've recently added. We have customers who terminate a bunch of site to cloud VPNs and they need a way to centralize, centrally manage and visualize what's the status and what's the deployment model look like for those VPNs. Well, we can do that now. So I have a bunch of VPNs connected to my Silver Peak environment. I love SD WAN as my former background was SD WAN. And so I have an SD WAN set up to Silver Peak connecting to them. And I have all my tunnels are up. They're all up, and here's the information about the tunnel. Quickly detect what's my environment look like. Again, you can click this topology button. It'll take you to where that look, how that looks on the topology. I already showed you that, so you don't see it again. BGP information. We're running BGP to those silver peaks to on-prem. And so we need to be able to collect what's being done over there, right? So what's my remote AS? Is it up? Is it down? What's the status? We'll build an alert on this. So you can see this established BGP information. And well, now you might be curious, well, what is, what am I learning from that peer? You might have hundreds of peers. I have some customers with hundreds of peers, right? It's an easy way to visualize what's being learned. Click the learn routes show button. And you can see here, here are all the routes that are being learned from that, that are being learned from that, that uh, on-prem. You might have hundreds of routes and you wanna be able to search through them. Well, that's great. We can do a search functionality to make sure you're learning that route. Okay, same thing for advertised. If you come from the Cisco world, this is like show IBB, IBG, Show IP BGP neighbor advertised routes and learned routes commands, right? So we now have that functionality here. Do you want to see what the topology looks like of that connectivity from your transit in Aviatrix Transit to the BGP downstream? You can do that. So this is my transit router in the cloud. Here's my local AS. Here are my active peers. They're up because they're green. And what's the peering information of the source and destination IPs, the remote AS. And here's the one that's down to a CSR that I have down just to demonstrate that this is what it looks like when it's down, all right? This is so cool. I love being able to visualize this because as you grow your network, you're gonna need some easy way to visualize things when you're troubleshooting. All right, lastly, and I leave the best for last, okay? This is called App IQ. It's brand new, that's what little new tag means. And what it is is a way to run a report for applications running in your cloud. And it gives you everything you need to know about that application performance from the, from the network perspective, if it's going to make it across, how it's making it across. So let's run this. Uh, let me just run a quick uh, test one. So from my East workload in, I think this is in Azure, if I'm not mistaken. No, this is in AWS East. I have another one in AWS West right here. And I'm gonna just gonna check, you know, what's the connectivity look like on port 8080 TCP, okay? I'm gonna do private. You can do it on the private or the public side. It'll take a couple seconds here to run this report. And it's, it's basically one-stop shop for visualization as to uh, what's it look like. Like, how's the health of my network from that app to app connectivity perspective. So let's give it a moment. There we go. So first thing you're presented with is this nice little diagram as to, oh, that's how I get within my overlay from source to destination. I go into this VPC. It hits these gateways. It goes across these transit infrastructures as a multi-cloud transit network. And then it go, hits these spoke gateways and it gets to the other side. So the path is up, everything is green. So I know that all my paths are up. All my equal cost multi-paths are up. And you can see all the different latencies across them, right? If you select this, you can see all the latencies that are being uh, hit across these potential paths. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, we can see all those latencies in a chart format or kind of like a um, different outputs, so you can quickly determine, do I have something out of the ordinary here? Well, not really, this looks good because this is within region, this is across region, this is back to within region. So you know that's probably fine, but if you had some like super high latency within region, you know something's wrong from 
AWS or Azure, I need to go talk to them and figure out, hey, look, look I have some information here saying your latency is super high right now. Can you fix that? So it's a nice way to quickly visualize that. Also, every gateway that we're hitting, every gateway that's servicing the packets, we're going to give you the performance of those gateways. So if there was a spike in the CPU or something, you'll be able to see that here. Same thing from a network perspective. What's the actual total bandwidth usage from source to destination? Or from destination to source, so the opposite direction, right? Or together. The last piece of uh, App IQ is we run what's called a, uh, um, a flight path. If you ever used flight path before, it's basically a controller function. The controller is really intelligent, right? It's collecting all the information about all the constructs, all the networking constructs in your clouds. Uh, whether it's AWS, Azure, or GCP, it doesn't matter. It's collecting all the route tables, the security groups, the network ACLs, the load balancers, all that stuff. It knows all about that. So why not use the intelligence of the controller to figure out if things are configured correctly to let traffic pass? And that's what flight path does. It tests from source to destination if the traffic can pass. So basically, this is the source interface, you know, East Workload PC. It, it passed the network ACL and you can open up the little, like, you, know, you can open up the, uh, the actual ACL ID if you want. If you, I have to log in, I think. Oh, it's already logged in. Okay, so it'll take you directly to that ACL in, in, um, uh, in AWS or whatever cloud you're working with. It pass the route table, it even highlights the route that and the next hop that it's going to hit, the security group that it's going to hit, the gateway, the AVHX gateway and the route table on there. And same thing from the transit perspective, the next hop. And then it goes, it gets to the other side through the AVHX multi-cloud network. When it gets to the other side, the network ACL passed, the route table passed, Hey, what didn't pass was a security group. Basically, I forgot to configure my security group on my instance to allow that port 8080 TCP inbound. And so it failed. And Aviatrix Copilot told us that, right? Everything else passed fine. And if you scroll up to the top, it actually gives you a little report here. It says, could not find the rule in the inbound security group of the destination to allow it. So just keep in mind, this would take you know, a long time to figure out yourself. You're jumping from construct to construct. Oh, also you can export this to a PDF if you want to email that to your buddies. But you know, it would take, you had to jump from construct to construct, from VPC to VPC, from region to region, cloud to cloud, and it's a pain. Take 15 seconds and let Avatrix figure it out for you. Imagine how much time you're saving you could go do something else. Go play video games or something. Go do something realistic, right? Go, go actually build and do stuff that makes your company money instead of having to sit here and trouble think, troubleshoot things that, that uh, takes your time away. Okay, that's the end of the demo. I hope we've got some good Q&A. We have people who are answering. That looks like all the Q&As were answered. We had some good Q&A. That's great. And the, Katie should be able to pop up the, um, the, uh, the poll if it hasn't already popped up. Katie, you popped the poll? There it is. Yeah, she's on the ball. Okay, thank you very much for joining us today. If you have any questions, feel free to email us. Um, we're always available to answer your questions. Jump on our website. We have people there live answering questions all day long. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon.